all right i found another feature on the casio classwiz that blew my mind i had no idea this was here i discovered it a while back ago and i've been showing all my students because it works with over 10 different topics and types of questions and it's quite powerful this feature is the ratio mode this is the ultimate proportion function that can answer questions quickly that can be used throughout the entire maths curriculum to access this mode, press menu and navigate to the ratio mode by using the arrow key or by pressing the associated number. For me, the number is four. You'll get these two options. To help better explain how these work, let's look at this question. Four shirts cost 15 pounds. How much would seven shirts cost? Let's put this information into a ratio, four to 15 and seven to our unknown price we're looking for. This is the same structure as the second option in the ratio mode where there is a missing value on the right part of the second ratio. Let's select this option by pressing two. All we do is type the values we have. Four, followed by equals. 15, followed by equals again. Seven, followed by equals. And then we finally press equals once more to get to our final answer. We now know the price is 26 pounds and 25 pence. All right, I'm going to go through a lot of past paper questions, and I mean a lot. I've got quite a few questions here using this mode. So yeah, stay tuned, have a look through, try the questions yourself, yeah, and let's get started. Let's start with an exchange rate question. Andy went on holiday to Canada. His flights cost a total of £1,500. Andy stayed for 14 nights. His hotel room cost $196 per night. Andy used Wi-Fi for 12 days. Wi-Fi cost $5 per day. The exchange rate was $19 to £10. Work out the total cost of the flights, the hotel room and Wi-Fi. Give your answer in pounds. All right, so we need to find the total dollars Andy spends. First, we calculate how much he's spending on the hotel room. He spends $196 per night for 14 days. So to calculate, we multiply 196 by 14, which is equal to $2,744. For Wi-Fi, at five hours a day for 12 days, that equals to $60. Adding these two values together, we get $2,804. The next thing we need to do is have this value converted into pounds. Let's place our information into ratios. These ratios are equivalent to each other. So $19 to 10 pounds, which equals to $2,804 to our unknown value in pounds. The right value is missing, so we press menu, four, and then two, where the missing X is. All right, now we put our values in. 19 equals 10 equals 2,804 equals. And finally, we press equals again. The amount in pounds is as a fraction, which is 28,040 over 19. And then we press SD to give our value as a decimal. Because we're dealing with money, we round our amount to two decimal places. Our final step is to add our 1,500 pounds to our new amount. We press menu followed by one to get back to calculate mode and add 1,500 to our value, which comes up to 2,975 pounds and 79 pence. Moving on to a common type of question, we have ingredients. 225 grams of flour are needed to make nine cakes. Marianne wants to make 20 of these cakes. She has 475 grams of flour. Does Marianne have enough flour to make 20 cakes? You must show all your working out. Let's place our information into ratios. Once again, they're equivalent to each other. 225 grams to nine cakes. 475 grams to our unknown value. The right value is missing, so we press menu four and two on our calculator. Next, we put our values like we did before, putting in our values and pressing equals after. Once we get to the end and press equals again, the amount of cakes 475 grams can make is 19. Therefore, Marianne does not have enough flour for 20 cakes. Okay, moving on to our next type of question, which is further proportional thinking. Ben and Lago have some identical packets. Ben has 20 of these packets. The total weight of Ben's packets is 32 kilograms. Lago has 25 of the packets. Work out the total weight of Lago's packets. As always, let's put our information into ratios and then into our calculators using the same process. Our ratios look like so. Therefore, our calculators look like this after putting in our values. Pressing equals, we end up with 40 kilograms. And that's it, the answer is 40 kilograms. We can also use this mode for direct proportion. Looking at this question, D is directly proportional to X. D equals to 36 when X equals to five. Work out the value of D when X equals to eight. 
let's put our information into ratios. Since d is directly proportional to x, we can represent the relationship as d to x. So our first ratio is 36 to 5, which is equivalent to our unknown d value to 8. The way I've set it up has the unknown on the left, so we press menu, 4, and then 1. Let's place our values into the calculator like before, and the final answer after pressing equals is represented as a fraction, which is 288 over 5. If we press the SD button, we can represent it as a decimal, which is 57.6. And that's our final answer. D will equal to 57.6. Okay, a different type of question we can get onto is unit conversion. Looking at this question, one yard is 36 inches. 10 centimeters is an approximation of four inches. Work out an approximation for the number of centimeters in two yards. As always, let's place our information into ratios, but with this question, we have two ratios. We would need to find out how many inches in two yards and then how many centimeters make this new value. Let's start with the two yards. We don't necessarily need to use our calculators for this part as we would just be doubling 36 to give us 72. However, if you did, you would get to the same answer. Now we know how many inches there are in two yards. We can lay out our ratios like so. Typing these values into our calculator, we get the final answer of 180 centimeters. Okay, now we're moving on to percentages. Most percentage questions can be solved with this mode. Let's have a look at this question. Last year, Joe paid 245 pounds for a car insurance. This year, she has to pay 383 pounds for a car insurance. Work out the percentage increase in the cost of her car insurance to the closest percent. Okay, like always, we have to put numbers into ratios. Let's start by understanding ourselves. So 245 pounds can be represented by 100% as that's our starting amount. So our first ratio is 245 pounds to 100%. Our equivalent ratio would be 383 pounds to the percent we're looking for. Placing this information into our calculator using the second ratio option, we get this long decimal number of 156.32653061.2% or to the closest percent, 156%. Now we have to think, going from 100% to 156% is an increase of approximately 56%, which is therefore our final answer. Okay, moving to our next question. This mode also works with map scales. So here's part of an accurately drawn map showing two towns, Appleton and Blinkford. Find in kilometers the real distance between Appleton and Blinkford. Okay, at the bottom we have a scale of one centimeter representing five kilometers. So let's first measure the distance between the two places. The distance between the two places is about seven centimeters. Now we can represent our information as ratios. We could change the scale to a ratio, which would be one centimeter to five kilometers, which is equivalent to our seven centimeters to our unknown distance in kilometers. Placing this information into our calculator, we end up with a distance of 35 kilometers. Okay, let's keep it going. Another type of question is scale factor. ABC and EDC are straight lines. EA is parallel to DB. EC equals to 8.1 centimeters. DC equals to 5.4 centimeters. DB equals to 2.6 centimeters. Work out the length of AE. Let's start by separating our triangles. Both of these triangles are mathematically similar. Therefore, the corresponding sides have the same relationship. Let's place the lengths on the shapes. We're trying to find the length marked x. We can now place our corresponding lengths into ratios. DC corresponds to EC. So the first ratio is 5.4 to 8.1. Length DB corresponds to our missing side AE, giving us the equivalent ratio of 2.6 to our unknown length. We put our values into the calculator, giving us the answer of 3.9 centimeters. Okay, next we have pie charts that can be solved with this mode. A group of football fans were asked what their half-term snack was. The table below gives information about the answers. Draw an accurate pie chart for this information. Okay, first we need to understand that a complete turn around a pie chart is 360 degrees, which also represents the total frequency. The total frequency can be calculated by adding 11, 17 and 8 together, which gives us the final answer of 36. Now we can write our first ratio as 36 to 360 degrees and the equivalent ratio of our first frequency, which would be 11 to our unknown angle. These are the values we put into our calculator. We press equals and our answer is 110 degrees for burgers. 
To find the remaining angles, we apply the same technique to the remaining frequencies, giving us 170 degrees and 80 degrees. I'm very aware that this question can also be done in a few different ways, and some of you may have recognized that the relationship between the frequency and the angle is that the angles are 10 times bigger. However, the relationship isn't always that straightforward for all questions, and that's why I'm showing you this technique. Okay, moving on to compound measures that can be used with this mode. Compound measures can be difficult, but are easily solved with this mode. A gold bar has a mass of 12.5 kilograms. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. Work out the volume of the gold bar. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Let's first represent our information as equivalent ratios. The density is 19.3 grams for every centimeters cubed. So the first ratio would be 19.3 grams to one centimeter cubed. This is equivalent to 12.5 kilograms to our unknown volume. What we do next is convert our mass of 12.5 kilograms to grams by multiplying 12.5 by 1000, giving us 12,500 grams. So now we replace 12.5 kilograms with this amount. And now repeat the process that we've been doing for the last few questions and place the values into the calculator, then pressing equals. This gives us 647.6683938 centimeters cubed. Now the question asks us to round it to three significant figures, so therefore our final answer is 648 centimeters cubed. Okay, the next bunch of questions, including all the questions related to this ratio button or any proportion question, can be solved really quickly using a trick I discovered that you won't find anywhere else online. You can watch that video right here. And I'm serious, you won't find this technique anywhere else on the internet. All right, if you want more tricks, watch our previous video. This is actually our third video of tricks using this calculator. I'm still looking for brand new ones, so stay tuned, soon come. I'm Mr. Ken, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Keep pushing onwards and upwards. Peace.